Today we celebrate the two great pillars of the Catholic Church, St. Paul and St. Peter. And if you've ever been to St. Peter's, my friends, and I don't know where, where other than it's in the, when you're standing at the front of St. Peter's looking in to the left, and you go to the, where the priest vests, there's, you know, you head back and you, you can ask somebody, it would be the sacristy, and it's huge. The sacristy is about the size of this church. But on a wall going there is a list of the popes etched in the stone, marble stone wall at St. Peter's. And it starts with St. Peter, and then it will say all the popes etched in the wall, all the one to the current pope. It's very interesting, my friends. It's very interesting to see the lineage take place. But it made, me, it made me reflect on the church this week. And I thought, if I asked you, what are the strengths of the Catholic Church, you would say what? And you should be able to say that right off the top of your head, my friends. There should be a list. I don't want to hear it because it would be a pause. There would be some mumbling. <laughs> Just like your spouse, my friends. If I asked to name three, three, three strengths of your spouse, you should be just like that. Your job, just like that. But we're accustomed to dwelling on the negative, my friends, aren't we? And how sad. How sad. There was a woman who had lost her 26-year-old husband. He was an electrician, and on the job he got electrocuted. And she spoke to her pastor, her priest, and she said to him, you know, I don't know how I'm going to make it. She said, you know, I'm all alone without my husband. And she said, I have three preschool children to raise, and I was so dependent on that wonderful man. And she said to Father, she said, I know one thing. I've got a choice to make. I can either stay bitter or I can get better. And I've come to church because I want to get better. Where else, my friends, can you deal with grief except in church? Because here, my friends, you receive your living God. And where else can you receive that? That's something to be grateful for. Where else can we have our sins forgiven and washed away for the mistakes that all of us make? I mean, most people in our society go on Oprah and all these talk shows or Facebook, don't we? Great. A lot of healing takes place there. But that's where our society is. We mock confession and then we go on Oprah and confess our sins. Really? Where's the sense of that? And where's the healing? Where's the healing? There's so much discontent and discouragement in today's world, my friends. Sigmund Freud, as he was dying of cancer of his mouth, he spent a large time, he lived in Vienna and it was coming, lived in like a santorium that was specialized trying to, trying to help him. And is returning to Vienna for the first time in a long time. And it was in the springtime. And this is what he said, what a pity. One has to grow old and ill before discovering the beauty of Vienna. One has to grow old and ill before making this discovery. We dwell on the negative, don't we, my friends? And we miss these beautiful things that happen in our life, in our relationships, and in our spirituality, don't we? There's a little devotional book called Springs of the Valley, and there's a dialogue between Satan and a man. And in this devotional, Satan is telling this man that he has a whole barn of seeds that he plants in human hearts. He said the most common seed that he plants is discontent and discouragement. He said he loves to plant those two seeds into people's hearts. And he said it's so easy to do that. He said it's so easy to do that. He said, but there's one place that discontentment and discouragement can't thrive. And the man said to him, what place is that? 
And he said, that's in the heart of a grateful person. Because the heart of a grateful person sees the strengths as opposed to looking at the weaknesses, don't they? And it's so sad when we look at the church and what it can do. You know, the church, my friends, was the first to start hospitals. You know that? The first was the church to start and really responsible for higher education, like colleges and, and grad schools. The church set up the system for all that. That whole education system is really based on the church. They're the first ones that reach out to the poor and to, lo and to, the, to all those third world countries. So much, my friends. The church does so much. I just finished reading a book. It's called Crash the Chatterbox. It's written by a pastor in Charlotte. Crash the Chatterbox. I really enjoyed it. It talked about three main, or four main things in her life. S insecurities, fears, discouragement, and I forget the fourth one. But I, but I was in the, in the section on discouragement. You know, the chatterbox is our brain. And, and he's saying how we need to crash that, those, those, all that chatter sometimes in our brain because it ends up affecting who we are and what we can be. And we need to crash that, he said. He said, you need to bring Almighty God into there and get that out. He said, a spirit of discontent can make even the greatest blessing seem like a burden. A spirit of discontent can even make the greatest blessing seem like a burden. And then he said, a spirit of gratitude can find a blessing within any burden. How true, right? How true. Sylvester Stallone in his last Rocky film. I'm being very theological today, my friends. I'm quoting Stallone and Sigmund Freud. Great theologians, you know that? <laughs> but Sylvester Stallone, and I, I remember, they're my parents sitting right, mom and dad, we went to see Rocky. And uh, I, I can't remember, it was different than the rest of the films, and, I, it was, and this is probably why. He said because he wrote this, looking at his life in a different light. He said, I was raised in a Christian home. He said, I went to Catholic schools, which surprised me, and I was taught the faith. He said, I went as far as I could with it until I got to the so-called world and was presented with temptation. He said, I kind of lost my way and made a lot of bad choices. He said he placed fame and career ahead of his family. He said, but it left him unsatisfied. The more I got, the more unsatisfied I became. He said, I... I now went back to church. He said, I turned myself over to the process of believing in Jesus and listening to his word and having him guide my life. He said, we cannot train ourselves. He said, I need the church. And the church is the gym of my soul. Interesting, isn't it? A gym trains the body and makes it better. The church trains our soul and makes it better too, right? Today, my friends, on this the feast of St. Peter and St. Paul, two great pillars of the church. The church is truly a blessing and has so much to offer each one of our lives. May we always look at the church as that, a blessing. God bless you.